September 17th, the impression of the stigmata upon St. Francis. In the month of August, in the year 1224, St. Francis of Assisi withdrew himself from the world for a while to commune with God on the summit of Laverna. He was accompanied by Brother Leo and five or six others, but he chose a hut apart under a beech tree and gave instructions that no one was to come near him except Leo when he brought him food or water. Around the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, Francis, being in prayer on the side of the mountain, raised himself towards God with much ardor and was transported by a tender and effective compassion of charity into him who out of love was crucified for us. In this state he saw, as it were, a seraph with six shining wings bearing down from the highest part of the heavens toward him with a most rapid flight and placing himself in the air near the saint. There appeared between his wings the figure of a man crucified, with his hands and feet stretched out and fastened to the cross. The wings of the seraph were so placed that two stretched above his head, two others he extended to fly, and with the other two he covered his body. At this sight a sudden joy, mingled with sorrow, filled Francis's heart. The close presence of his lord under the figure of a seraph, who fixed on him his eyes in the most gracious and loving manner, gave him great joy, but the sorrowful sight of his crucifixion pierced his soul with compassion. Suddenly, in a moment of great pain, the seraph smote him, as it were, in body and soul, and Francis had great fear, till the seraph spoke and made plain many things which had been hitherto hidden from him. Then, after a moment which seemed an age, the vision vanished. But the saint's soul remained interiorly burning with ardor, and his body appeared exteriorly to have received the image of the crucifix, as if his flesh had received the marks of a seal impressed upon it. The scars of the nails began to appear in his feet and hands, resembling those he had seen in the vision of the man crucified. His hands and feet seemed bored through in the middle with four wounds, and these holes appeared to be pierced with nails or hard flesh. The heads were round and black, and were seen in the palms of his hands and in his feet in the upper part of the instep. The points were long and appeared beyond the skin on the other side and were turned back as if they had been clinched with a hammer. There was also in his right side a red wound, as if made by the piercing of a lance, and this often shed blood, which stained the clothes of the saint. To produce the exterior marks of the wounds in the flesh, which his interior love of his heart was not able to do, the fiery seraph, or rather Christ himself in that vision, by darting piercing rays from his wounds represented in the vision, really formed exteriorly in St. Francis those signs which love had interiorly imprinted in his soul. Whether or not St. Francis was the first person to be thus marked with the stigmata of our crucified Lord, his is unquestionably the most famous example. Moreover, it is the only occurrence of the sort to be celebrated by a liturgical feast throughout the Western Church. The happening and general nature of the phenomenon are beyond doubt. It is referred to by Brother Leo in the note which he wrote in his own hand of St. Francis, a document preserved by the conventual friars at Assisi, and also in announcing the death of their patriarch to the friars of France, Brother Ellis wrote in the year 1226, for a long while before his death, our father and brother appeared crucified, bearing in his body the five wounds which are the stigmata of Christ. The Book of Miracles adds that crowds who flocked to Assisi saw in the hands and feet not the fissures of the nails, but the nails themselves. The fact of stigmatization has been confirmed by modern examples. The stigmata often bleed periodically, especially on Fridays, and in no recorded case do they subside. It would appear, then, that God singles out certain noble souls to be united more closely with the sufferings of his Son, souls who are willing, and in some degree worthy, to expiate the sins of others by bearing before the world the form of Jesus crucified. In the large number of reported stigmatizations in the past 700 years, only some 50 or 60 are at well attested, and some of these are explainable by fraud or other natural means. So the valid phenomenon remains 
remains a rare and remarkable indication by God of some of those who are heroically his servants. With some few exceptions, the best-known stigmatists were either friars, nuns, or tertiaries of one or of the other meditative orders.